Dear friends, welcome to another episode in the fantastic military world. In this video, we'll talk about another statement from French President Emmanuel Macron, who said that Putin has brought NATO back to life, and that if French troops are sent to Ukraine and suffer casualties, France will not activate NATO. According to a Wall Street Journal article published this Wednesday, April 3rd, at the beginning of 2024, French President Emmanuel Macron had lengthy phone meetings with President Biden and German Chancellor Olaf Scholz to prepare the ground for a conference that took place in Paris on February 24th this year, gathering Ukraine's main allies. The article mentioned that in these talks, Macron insisted that the United States and Germany change their stances in the war and adopt a position of strategic ambiguity towards Russia, leaving all military options on the table, including, of course, the potential deployment of Alliance soldiers to Ukraine. This would represent a radical shift in the West's stance, particularly the United States, with President Biden despite having sent tens of billions of dollars in arms for Ukraine's defense, always insisting on maintaining as balanced a position as possible to avoid actions that might provoke Moscow and lead to an escalation of a conflict that, for now, is still contained within Ukraine's borders. But Macron wants this to change with the first step involving ending a Western habit in that conflict, which involves announcing in advance what kind of weapons Ukraine's allies will or will not send for the country's defense. According to Macron, if the West stops announcing what kind of arms they will send to Ukraine, the concept of red lines that the Kremlin uses to determine what the West can or cannot send to Kyiv will end. However, despite his insistence, both President Biden and Chancellor Schultz opposed this idea. Deciding to maintain the strategies used since the conflict began more than two years ago. But, to these countries' surprise, Macron publicly moved forward with his suggestion for a radical change of stance in the war, announcing at that meeting in Paris at the end of February that the West should not rule out any support options for Ukraine, including, of course, the potential deployment of troops to the country. This announcement led to an internal rift among the alliance's main members with the United States and Germany the two largest contributors to the Ukrainian defense effort, publicly announcing their intention not to send troops to Ukraine, with France leading a small group formed by the Czech Republic, Estonia and Denmark, showing sympathy for this new approach defended by President Macron. This stance of Macron now in 2024 represents a radical change compared to his stance at the beginning of 2022, when he presented himself as a peacemaker trying to talk and negotiate with Putin in an attempt to avoid the start of the war, talks, and negotiations that proved futile, with Putin simply ignoring the French effort and moving forward to war. The way Macron was treated by Putin, leading him to be compared with British Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain, who tried in vain to appease Hitler to avoid war, surely must have deeply marked him, leading him to classify Putin as a man without a word and not trustworthy something that had a direct influence on his radical change of stance towards Russia and the invasion of Ukraine. Macron even went as far as to say that Putin was directly responsible for resurrecting NATO, a reference to a statement he made in 2019 when he said that the alliance was brain dead. According to the French president, the Russian invasion of Ukraine served to expose the alliance's weaknesses, leading member countries to launch full force into various rearmament programs with a highlight on the production of artillery munitions, which has tripled since 2022, a number that promises to multiply by 10 by 2027, with the construction of more production lines in Europe and the United States. Specifically regarding the deployment of troops to Ukraine, Macron made it clear that they will not be sent to the front line and will act in the rear, in training missions, air defense operations, and border defense, mainly with Belarus, and made a point of emphasizing that, if French troops suffer casualties in Ukraine due to direct Russian action, his country will not activate NATO. Remembering that French troops also suffered casualties in the past, such as in conflicts in Africa, and that at no time was the alliance activated or encouraged to get involved. This is an important issue, since top members of Vladimir Putin's regime made it clear that any French soldier on Ukrainian soil will be a priority target to be shot down. That is, whenever the presence of French troops in a facility or area in Ukraine is discovered, Russia will surely try to bombard to cause casualties, injure, and kill. And with this, try to force French public opinion against the presence of troops in a country at war. 
but Macron seems to be firm in his determination to support Ukrainian defense with troops on the ground. As he recently said, the time has come for Europe not to show cowardice. As war has finally returned to European soil, a reference to the fact that if Putin wins in Ukraine, Russia will continue advancing against other countries, an advance that will inevitably lead to Russian invasion forces clashing head-on with NATO. And it is to prevent the war from reaching the Baltic countries, Poland, Romania, or even France and Germany, that Macron defends a concentrated effort to ensure that Putin is defeated where he is right now, which is in Ukraine. And if you are not yet subscribed to the channel, subscribe and activate the notification bell to not miss any news, criticisms, ideas, or suggestions. You can leave them in the comments.